the physical reality in which we now sit is one of a number of realities. There are other planes of existence which are invisible to our normal, everyday senses. There are also invisible forces and energies operating upon us which we can't see. Today, reports from all over the world show a growing concern over the mushrooming attraction towards the occult. Occult simply means something that's hidden, hidden from plain sight. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have any connotations other than that, although when people talk about the occult, they imagine black magic ceremonies, Dennis Wheatley, horror movies, that sort of thing. But really, occult just means something which is hidden from view. There is a series of ideas, something that's called the wisdom of the ages, or the perennial philosophy enshrined in the modern era in what we call theosophy. Theosophy comes from two words, theo, divine, sophia, wisdom. And these ideas underpin all science, religion, and philosophy. They go back into the mists of time far longer than modern science would accept. And these ideas represent cosmic laws, unchangeable things about ourselves and the universe. By their very definition, some people are not yet at a stage where they can understand these things very readily. Therefore, they are occult to them. They are hidden from their view until they reach a point in their own evolution when they are ready to absorb and use these ideas. When people talk about the occult, it always has a kind of deviant quality to it. People think that there's something slightly sinister or illegal about it, and they imagine people in robes doing all sorts of magical spells and engaging in black magic of one sort or another. So it has, through popular culture, achieved this particular status, which is a very, very distorted one. Very, very few people really understand what the occult is. Um, many of the bookshops in London and elsewhere in big cities um, have a mind, body and spirit section to them. A lot of people are still interested in the works of people like Aleister Crowley, for example, and the Golden Dawn, who operated uh, a century or so ago. And some of these people at the time were involved with other societies in England and elsewhere. But I think that now, because the term occult has become degraded, it's very difficult for people to see it's just about studying the hidden laws of nature, hidden forces and energies, uh, an alternative view of the origins of humankind, of the cosmos, that the physical reality in which we now sit is one of a number of realities. There are other planes of existence which are invisible to our normal, everyday senses. There are also invisible forces and energies operating upon us which we can't see. There are entities and kingdoms of nature which are also invisible to most human beings. If we look at what we might call theosophy today, the divine wisdom today, the perennial philosophy. It's been enshrined in a number of things uh, during the course of history. The Greeks had elements of it, the Babylonians had elements of it, the Egyptians did, so did the Celts, and so did the Neoplatonists who flourished in the centuries after Christ. Religions had this deeply embedded in them, but so deeply embedded that it's actually invisible. In the modern era, there was an upsurge of interest in all this sort of thing in the mid-19th century. 
There were people like Eliphas Levy, who was um, an early French uh, occultist who wrote a number of interesting books about this. But perhaps the most pivotal figure and one of the founders of the Theosophical Movement was a woman called Madame Helena Blavatsky, who was a Russian noblewoman and she traveled widely in the East, in Africa, all over the world and accrued various aspects of this wisdom taken from different traditions and put it together in her most monumental work which is called The Secret Doctrine. Since that was published in 1888, these ideas have gained much more traction. Because of the widespread availability of mass communications over the last half century and because of deeper concern about the state of the planet, be it morally, environmentally, financially, politically, whichever way you look at it, people have become much more dissatisfied with the status quo. Many people are worried that we are in the process of destroying this planet and some people believe this process of destruction is irreversible. I don't personally believe that. So a lot of these things have focused people's attention on more, shall we say, non-material things where people start to look at the broader spiritual questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? What's the purpose of being here? Will I be here again? These big questions, and people often start asking these questions much sooner than they used to. People in their teens and twenties now start to ask these questions. You don't have to wait until you get to be 40 or 50 before you start deciding you know, what it's all about. And that's why there's such a great hunger for spiritual and non-materialistic uh, explanations of things. One of the key ideas underpinning all esoteric traditions is the interconnectedness of all life and the interdependency of it all. So each of the kingdoms of nature, the mineral, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the human kingdom, are all utterly dependent on each other and yet they regard themselves as separate. Human beings regard themselves as separate even though they are much more intimately interconnected uh, than they would realize. And this interconnectedness um, is something which I think is an innate to human beings. The Theosophical tradition teaches that anywhere in the universe is no such thing as empty space or dead matter. Everything is teeming with life, but most of that is life that we cannot perceive with our existing physical senses which operate on this world, unseen to most people. Now, this is an idea which is extremely difficult for people to understand, especially in a world where seeing is believing. If we can't see it, then we don't believe it. But this is deeply ironic because the human eye can only see less than 1% of the whole electromagnetic spectrum. So seeing is believing is you know, a very limited way of looking at all these things. I'm closer to the golden dawn Immersed in Crowley's uniform of imagery I'm living in a silent film Portraying Himmler's sacred realm of dream reality I'm frightened by the total goal Drawing to the ragged hole And I ain't got the power 